All right, Luke. We bit right away. Yeah. Nice. Oh, it's a it's a really nice one. Is it a big one? Yeah. All right. Do you wanna? You wanna hoop them right up? Yeah, yeah. We haven't been in the water more than a couple minutes. There. Oh yeah, beauty. <laughs> Awesome start. My buddy Luke right Bennig and I are fishing the upper Mississippi River. For just, channel catfish. Just growling at us. Yeah. Fishing here with circle hooks. A little bit of liver. Yeah. Yeah, and those are mighty fine. Get eating. those get those hooks out. Yeah, look at that. Pretty yeah. one. That's a cool start. Get a bite by your mic and give him a growl. Can you hear me? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so we're about 50 to 100 miles as the river winds from that very headwaters of the Mississippi River. You know, a lot of folks kind of equate the Mississippi River with kind of a long, wide, deep river, real lazy, and this is a completely different environment way yep. up here. Yeah, a little bit smaller water, some currents, some rocks. Yeah. A lot of down trees. Yeah, good structure for cats. Yep. <laughs> Pretty straightforward rods Luke and I are using here. I've got a seven foot six medium heavy power fast action. It's actually Mojo Yak rod short butt on it which is nice in the smaller boat and Luke's using a 7.6 medium heavy fast mojo bass rod. So the uh, really like the medium heavy power rods got a good soft tip and that medium heavy power rod is enough backbone to help us kind of pull those fish away from those sticks. Got him? Yep. Got him. Get him out of the wood. Get him out of the wood. Nice. Oh man. Well, that's a good one too. Is that heavy rod? Yep. Pull him up. Out. So you got to get, you got to get them out of that timber right away. You know, we're fishing pretty low current right now, pretty low water levels, which is nice in some respects because it concentrates the fish in, in uh, smaller areas, but it also limits the number of spots you can fish. But Luke, they're always going to be around that timber, right? They're going to be really close right in those, right in, right in that timber. And if they grab it, get in that timber, that's going to be bad news for keeping a fish on the line. Yeah, they get into that and put slack in the line and even with a circle hook, they'll pop right out. Another so nice one. Good looking fish. Yeah, so fun too. You don't have to be Oop. big to put a lot of pressure on the gear. <laughs> and we'll talk here in a second about how Luke likes to rig up for these fish. But oh yeah, that's a big one there. That's a nice, nice channel. Good job, brother. Beauty, beauty, right beauty, there beauty. in the corner of the mouth. Yep. So the rig that we're using here is for the braid. We're using the Suffix 832. 65 pound test. We have a two ounce no roll lead sinker. The bead is just there, a little put cushion and protection for that knot onto the swivel, which is a 180 pound test VMC stainless steel barrel swivel. And then just the braid leader down to the three aught circle hook. And you'll see that three aught VMC tournament circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. That's the beauty of using circle hooks. You know, we got. <laughs> We got a nice delicacy for these fish to eat that liver and they will swallow a regular hook so fast. If you do want to release the fish, it's always going to be in the corner of the mouth. Otherwise, if you want to keep a few. It's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Healthy. There you go. These Mojo Bass and Mojo Yak rods we're using have a couple of the key uh, technologies that St. Croix Rods is well known for. Uh, SC3 graphite, so a real sensitive rod, um, but very strong and durable rod as well with the IPC, the integrated polycurve technology, meaning that from butt to tip, it's a consistent blank taper. There aren't any stages or points in the blank where it ratchets down and gets more narrow, like a lot of rods are manufactured that way. Consistent all the way from butt to tip means there's no weak points and no stress points that can break on a bigger fish. Got him, got him, nice. Got him, feels good. So we've just been kind of hopping. Here we go. Some, hopping spots here, just hitting these little cuts where there's a little bit of timber along the shoreline. There's not a ton of it, um, yeah. but when we find a get spot, the we get a bite. Right. We've had a couple that have just bumped it, nibbled it, and not stayed on the hook. This one bit this good. One finally though. committed. Oh, nice one. A big one? Yeah, that's a big one. How's he feeling that St. Croix? Good. Those big head shakes. Oh man, look at him yeah. trying to go tail down. Break the silver one. Nice. Here comes. Whoop, right there. Down. Nice. Awesome. Oh, that's that's yeah. another good chunky one there. Yeah. So really, that might be our biggest one yet. Really good fish. Set my rod down. Yep. 
And we should uh, remind folks how to grab catfish too, because they've got pectoral fins and a dorsal fin with a spine in it. And you can grab them by the top of the head, but you just have to make sure you push that dorsal down. Yeah. Most easy is just to grab them by the belly like that. And you can see how Luke's got the... These pectorals get really sharp and can poke you pretty good. Yeah, you don't want you that. You just kind of got to watch your hands on those. Yeah. And hey. those front whiskers won't hurt you. It's just those two. These ones are okay, but these ones yeah. can get you. Nice. Fun couple hours of fishing, bud. Really fun. Thanks for having me. Oh, enjoyed it very much. Folks, you know, there's little rivers and streams all over the upper Midwest that have great catfishing. Super fun fish to catch. Super easy tackle to catch them. And you can do it from shore or just a canoe or a kayak or a small boat. So get out there and enjoy some catfishing this summer. I'd like to thank my good friend Luke Pegg for taking us out today. I'm Roger Cormier. We'll be right back with more Midwest Outdoors.